also Shannon. You know, yesterday you bet Skip that LeBron and AD will combine for 70 plus mm -hmm. points tonight. Oof. So what exactly do you expect from the Lakers game four? I expect the intensity to be like it was in the fourth quarter for the entirety of the game. They know what they're up against and they need to what they need to do is to make sure this this giant blaze uh, this little smoldering doesn't become a giant blaze mm. because as they go further along, and that's what happened in Utah, that's what happened against the Clippers, they gain more and more confidence. They're like, hold on, we beat them. And we beat them again. Mm -hmm. Oh, we beat them again. And the yep. next thing you know, you're in game seven and anything can happen in the game seven. So I expect the Lakers to come out and play with the intensity that they played in games two through five against the uh, Trailblazers, the game, uh, against, uh, also against the, uh, the Rockets. Skip, it's unacceptable for the Lakers to lose the rebounding battle by 17. The <laughs> Lakers are the biggest team in basketball. When you consider they have AD at 6'10", Dwight Howard at 6'10", 6'10 and a half, and you have seven foot tall JaVale, and you have six foot eight and a half, six foot nine LeBron James, there is no way. I understand if you lose the rebounding battle by one or two. That happens. But you can't lose it by 19. Not against that team. Because they shoot the ball entirely too well. They drive the ball entirely too well. And you've done, you haven't done your job if you force a bad shot, you've done your job when you force a bad shot and you grab secure the rebound. And by the way, lowest rebound total for the Lakers in any regular or playoff game, mm -hmm. regular season or playoff, since 2006. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, the, they tied it. Yeah. In 94, they had in 92, they had 25, they had 24 in a game. So they tied it in 2000. Let that sink in for a second, Skip. With those big guys out there. That's unacceptable. They oh, helped me out on the totals again. AD had two. JaVale had one. Dwight, Dwight had one. Yes. Four rebounds Four. for three bigs. Bigs. Right? Big bigs. Yes. Uh, Dwight Howard is a double-double for a career. Anthony Davis, if I'm not mistaken, is a double-double for a career. Mm -hmm. And JaVale, we, that's what he's there for, to block shots and to rebound. He starts. Yes. Yes. So I expect them to play better. And, Skip, the reason why I said the, uh, the AD and LeBron need to have 70 because I'm not sure where that third was going to come from. So it's revolving. Sometimes it's Caruso. Sometimes it's uh, uh, Rondo. Sometimes it's Kuzma. Uh, Keith has been known to have a game here or there, but that's not what we can really count on. The one thing we should always be able to hang our hats on is, is uh, AD and LeBron going bonkers. And I expect them to be aggressive. I expect AD to play better. Skip, it's not that he played bad, but when you look at his stat line, 27-2-1, and one, that, the, 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 one is unex the two is unacceptable. Yep. So you're going to have 27, you need to give me 15 rebounds because you, gotta, you can't let Joker and you can't let all these second chance get these second cracks at you. So that's what I'm expecting. I expect him to be more aggressive. And Skip, look, LeBron James is driving the ball 12 times a game. He averaged 13 times in the first two series. He shot eight free throws a game in the first two series. He's shooting three free throws a game in this one. Mm. Driving the ball one fewer time. And in game three, he took two free throws off a flagrant, flagrant foul. Let that sink in for just okay. a second. Now, you say you want to see him. He's freight training. He's getting, he's, dry, he's doing exactly what Skip Bayless has always implored LeBron James to do. Drive the basketball. He's drive the basketball, but for some reason, they're swallowing the whistles. But every time I turn around, I see Jokic at the foul line. I see Jeremy Grant at the foul line. I see Jamal Murray at the foul line. I see all of those guys at the foul line. But for some reason, the greatest driver of the basketball is not at the foul line. Hmm. As Frankie B said, we're going through the proper channels. I'm not going to say what we are or aren't doing, but let's just say we put it out there. To well, say they officially presented their case to the league. Yes, yes. And so we want, we want some of these calls that y'all have been giving them. With that being said, Skip, I expect the Lakers to come out, dominate this game early, and win this ball game. By what? <sighs> Lakers, I mean, look, the Nuggets always make runs at the end. I'm going to say they win by six. By six. And and you have LeBron and AD, because we have another case to do yes. on this, going for 70-plus yeah. combined. Yes. How would that approximately break down? Would it be 35 and 35, or would LeBron get 40? It might be 40-30 AD. It might be 40-30 Braun. Not sure. I'm not sure. More likely to be 40-30 Braun? Uh, probably AD, because I think they're going to try to get... AD. Yeah, probably. I think yesterday, gonna, you were more heavy yeah, on Braun. I think, I think LeBron is going to always try to get AD going, because he knows he can get whatever he wants whenever he wants. That's a lot of points. There ain't a lot of points. Not for them two. Okay. I hear everything you just said, and I don't have big quibble with anything you just said, except I do have some perspective on those free throws mm -hmm. that the Lakers are complaining to the league about. 
So I spent last night doing two things, watching my hero and <laughs> struggling with an internal battle of head versus heart over Lakers Nuggets mm -hmm. tonight because my heart keeps saying, come on, Nuggets, put them on the hot seat. I just want to see this go 2-2 two -two and see how LeBron, AD, and the rest, and Frankie V, see how they react under real fire, true Western Conference playoff fire. I would just love to see the drama, the theater of that in a game five. But my head keeps saying, no, no, no. The Lakers are just better. My head keeps reminding me that in the fourth quarter of game three, from the 10-minute mark down to the five-minute mark, your team went on a 21-4 to run. The Lakers actually became the Nuggets in that game mm -hmm. and did what the Nuggets did often to the Clippers and obviously to the Jazz. And 21-4 to is hard to do in a five-minute stretch of the fourth yeah. quarter. 21 to 4, and your man had 11 of those points, and it started with the three that seemed inconsequential at that moment. Right. But then he goes, break dunk, break dunk, break dunk. And, and that was electrifying LeBron at his most impactful, mm -hmm. where for that stretch, he took that game over. And I believe he hit the wall a little bit physically because, it, uh, uh, how old is he? 30, 35. I believe a 25-year-old, I believe an 18-year-old would have hit the wall because it was such an explosion of energy mm -hmm. that I think his legs weren't quite underneath him when he took the three to tie and he right. missed it wide left, and that seemed to be kind of psychologically the end of them. But they did do that, and they walked away from that game saying, we did do that. Right. We had them effectively on the ropes at 101 to 98. We cut it all the and way. And they might have discovered something, Skip. You remember in the game, uh, in, what was it, 2015, the yep. year before? Mm -hmm. It was Golden State that stumbled upon a lineup and a defense that gave them problems, although they lost the game. They did. It stumbled true, upon true. something. I, so I, Frankie V might have stumbled upon he something. Stumbled upon a zone defense featuring Rondo kind of at the point of the defense, right. just disrupting every dribble and every pass. Right. And in that five minute stretch, it felt like Rondo took over yes. defensively yes. at six feet. What is he, one, maybe yeah. six one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I get all of the above. But one other head point that, that sticks in my craw, I'm going to bring this up again because I think it's significant. My Clippers against the Nuggets were routinely an eight-and-a-half-point favorite mm -hmm. through six games. Right. Then game seven, they dropped to seven-point right. favorites because I think the odds makers finally said, okay, we got to give some respect to this right. other team. But they're not giving the Lakers the kind of respect that they were giving the Clippers against the Nuggets because the Lakers keep being six-point favorites, and you say, oh, that's not that big a discrepancy, but it is from eight-and-a-half to six. Skip, I think the thing is, is they, they looked at the way the Nuggets played against Utah. Now you can argue it's just more respect right. to the Nuggets and, and it's disrespect. After, after what they did to the Clippers, they're like, we really need to pay these guys some respect. Okay, but they're not saying that the Lakers are dominant in this series. They're, they're, not, they're not showing you that this is up close to a double-digit spread. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they keep saying tonight is a six-point game, which says, okay, this team's a little better, but it's not significantly right. better. So I keep hanging on to that a little bit. Now let's go to the free throws. Okay, for the for the whole the three games played, the Nuggets have shot 90 free throws to your team 78. Not a huge margin, not huge advantage, Denver. Usually you get to the line because you're just the more aggressive team. Mm -hmm. And you can argue that really in game two and game three, they, they proved to be slightly more aggressive than the Lakers did in those two games. Okay, let's look at the big two on each team then. I agree with you, LeBron, he shot 10 free throws in three games. What? That's that's wrong. Yeah. That, that There's something wrong with this picture. He's made seven out of 10. Right. But this is not wrong. AD has shot 32 free throws in three games, so he's averaging double-digit free throws. That's right. right. I mean, that, that's, that's a good thing mm -hmm. for the Lakers, and he's made 28 out of 32. That will work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the big two for the Lakers have combined to shoot 42. Other side, Joker has shot. He's made 19 of 23 free throws. And Jamal Murray has shot 19 free throws, made 15 of those. So 23 and 19 equals 42. So big two versus big two, it's 42 to 42. I, I don't think the league is, is messing with the Lakers on that. So your, your two stars versus two stars, it's even up. At the Skip, free throw line. when you look at Jeremy Grant have shot more free throws in one game than LeBron has shot in this series, there's yeah. something seriously wrong with that picture. Okay, now to Jeremy Grant. 
he is really good and getting better by the dribble. He's 26 years of age, and he's up to his – This is he's ending his sixth season. Mm-hmm. Obviously, his father played in the league at a high level. Mm-hmm. His uncle played in the league at mm-hmm. a high level. Yep. So – Something is going on with him. He's six eight and he's listed at two ten. He might weigh a little bit more than two ten. He's up against six nine, two fifty ish mm-hmm. in LeBron. But he's really good at staying in front of LeBron just the way he did. He he, he gave Kawhi problems. Right. He's long and he's strong. Right. And he's not afraid. He's physical and he's he he's a shrewd operator on defense. He knows the angles and he tends to be in the right place at the right time. Right. He doesn't get faked off his feet very often. He he is a high-level defender. Plus, the thing what he's doing, Skip, is that he's making LeBron work on the defensive end so he can't rest. Normally, they try to put he LeBron... Especially did in Game 3 because right. he just said, I'm coming, man. Right, so what they normally try to do is they take the best offense, your best, one of your best offensive players, put him on someone that's offensively challenged from the other team so he gets the rest on that end. But they're telling him, you need to go at him. You need to put the ball on the floor, make him slide his feet from side to side so we can take some of the steam out of it. It might not do it early, but come late in the third, fourth quarters. I agree. Okay. LeBron is the greatest driver of the basketball ever. He is the ultimate freight train. And I do think there's what I would call a Shaq syndrome Mm -hmm. operating with LeBron because Shaquille, at his greatest, his most dominant, it, it was brutal basketball. It was hard to watch. It was football basketball. And I never, it, from play to play, I could, is it a block or a charge? Is it a block or a charge? I don't know. Because he's just running over, but he's also getting fouled. Right. And after a while, they're swallowing their whistle. Yes. They're saying, ah, eh, just play. Yeah, you. Just, well, I, I don't even know how to officiate this. Just play. He like the, he like, he like the, the oversized kid with the little smaller kid. Like, we can't call no okay, foul. We can't call a foul. <laughs> and yet he still dominated. Yeah. He had Kobe, but he still dominated. Mm-hmm. Okay. So LeBron, to me, especially in game three, was not in what I call attack mode. And he had better be tonight. Mm-hmm. So to your point, if, if you're going to win this bet for me, I, I look to LeBron to have a better shot at scoring 40 than AD. Because if, if he just goes into supreme attack mode from the start and says, I'm just taking it to the rim every time, mm-hmm. and maybe – they have planted the subliminal seed in the minds of right. the officials tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they got a call from the league. Right. Let's let's think about this. Right. Let's, let's be a little more attuned to this. Mm-hmm. Let's let's be a little more keen on is it a foul of LeBron? Are right. we letting are we letting Jeremy Grant and others get right. away with 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 bodying him? Right. You know. Well, considering I, I don't really know who the officials are, Kane Fitzgerald. And, and and Mark Davis uh, officiated the other night. Yep. It was Trey Maddox and Tony Brothers yep. and Scott Foster last night. Yep. So is it going to be Sean Wright, Ed Malloy, John okay. Goble? Tonight? I don't really know the officials of tonight's ball game. And I'm really like, well, you know all the officials. Yeah, I, I do. Because I'll be watching, I'll be watching the games, and so I will want to see how they call Lakers games compared to how they call other people's games, Skip. Yep. But when you, you're absolutely right. And I think the thing is, is that LeBron and AD realize we really we hope that guys can make shots. We hope guys come along. Yep. But we can't definitively say we know which one of these guys that we can count on. Yep. The only thing that we can count on, as AD and LeBron always say, you got my back, I got your back. Yep. And so they really need to have each other's back tonight. AD needs to be a monster, not only scoring the ball, but rebounding, blocking shots. They need to challenge, uh, 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 like I said, and I'm not going to be surprised if Dwight Howard starts this game. But they, I would do that if I were Frankie V. Because remember, uh, against the against the Lakers, Skip, they they ended up removing Javale and Dwight from that series, and Keith Morris. Yep. They went small with them, and so they need somebody that can bang yep. with joke early. Yep. So therefore, no, Skip, he doesn't get a rhythm. He got a rhythm early, the other night. Dwight bothers him because Dwight plays with such edge. He nearly went over the edge, yes. according to our man Chris Haynes mm-hmm. in Yahoo the mm-hmm. other night, where he. He was just going at the referees right. until he finally stepped right. one foot over right. the cliff. And whoever it was, who was Mark in Davis. It was Mark Davis. Mark Davis. Said, That's yeah, that enough, enough of that. I right? don't know if Mark I, Scott. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was Mark Davis because he, he was he was the the, uh, the, the black uh, ball headed guy. Yep. And he's like, hey, enough. It might be Bill Kennedy. So I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't see Bill Kennedy yep. or Sean Wright or one of those guys uh, tonight at the ball game. So it's going to be interesting. I expect Braun to be Braun. Okay. Uh, there, he's averaging, what, 23 points a game? That's not good enough. 
LeBron knows in order for them to have a chance, he needs to be in the high 20s, maybe even low 30s. He does. He needs to immediately impose his will yes. on this game, which he is highly capable of. Yes. We've seen it all year long. He needs to imprint himself on this game right. where, where it becomes his game. He's in charge yes. of it. That's by attacking and scoring early, getting to the free throw line earlier. And once you get them rolling on the backward, mm -hmm. once you get them playing backward downhill mm -hmm. on their heels, then you can start kicking it to the three-point right. shooters. And I'm going to say this one more time. In the end, these games are just three-point shooting contests right. that we're about to talk about a game last night where the roles were reversed, and I don't even know how the Heat survived <laughs> as cold from three as they were. But the Lakers cannot shoot six of 26 no. and hope to beat these guys. No. You can't. You can't shoot one of eight in the fourth quarter no. and hope to beat these guys because you will not. Nope. Nope. Because so, they're going to make – because they're going to make – they're going to they, – you know, they're going to make theirs. Jamal Murray get hot. Uh, uh, you know, they got guys that can make shots late in ball games because they've been in so many of these ball games. They're not bothered by the moment. The Lakers haven't been in these ball, these type ball games, Skip. Yeah, they're in the playoffs and made it, you know, they're one in five in, in both series. But the Nuggets have been down one three in all three of theirs. Yep. And they found ways to win. And what they've done is that they've kept the games close. Yep. And then, and as you mentioned, they're one of the better uh, uh, teams operating in clutch situations. Game within five, five, last they five minutes of the game. the most clutch time points in the playoffs. And when you factor in that Jamal Murray is shooting 73% from the three in those situations. He's hit eight. Let's get, let that sink in for a second. Yep. From the three-point line, somebody's shooting 73%. Guys don't shoot. Clutch time. Yes, guys yeah. don't shoot that from the free-throw line, yeah. let alone from the three when the moment is at his, at his highest. Okay, so I'm glad you brought him up. He is the X factor to me. His coach, Mike Malone, keeps saying he has become a superstar. Mm -hmm. If that is true, you could be in trouble tonight. Because I look at how he sort of figures his way into each series where he starts quietly. Right. And then against the Jazz, it got louder and louder and louder mm -hmm. against the Clippers. Louder, louder, louder. And these games against your team, 21 in game one, it was a blowout for your side. 25 in game two, and he says we should have won game two. Right. He hit the shot. 28 in game three when when they were dominating much of the game with eight rebounds and 12 assists. Without the problem, Skip, it's not so much the scoring is that he scored and got other people opportunities. That's what LeBron, and see, remember, Skip, that's what LeBron normally does. LeBron is the guy, you, you look at his numbers this year, he was 25, but he had 10 assists. Yeah. And we know some of those assists come to that three-point line. And that's what happened with Jamal Murray. So you're going to have to be careful. Le the Lakers are going to have to do a much better job hey. in the pick and roll situation. Because that's, that, that's, they kill him in the pick and roll with Jokic and Murray. If this game is tight with two minutes left, you, you better beware of this guy. Because he lives for these moments and he was shimmying on you the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's feeling good. Okay. He's feeling good about himself. Yeah, feeling we, we, gonna do no we ain't going to do no shimmying. We ain't going to do that. We're just going to come out there. We all business. Okay. So... I'm going to go on record. I trust your man LeBron tonight to impose his will on this game and to have a huge night and a triple-double and a dominating triple-double that matters, that counts, where he's doing all the right things at the right moments as opposed to in game yes. three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 105-101 Lakers, still fairly close. Right. But I, I say they, they hang in and hang on tonight, and yet – if it goes to 3-1, you could make a case. The Nuggets will say, we got them right where we want them. Yeah. Right? Oh, the Nuggets are not quitting. Oh, you're going to beat – this is a team that you have to beat. They're just not going to roll over like, oh, man, one, two, three, Cancun, it's over. Mm. That's the Lakers. That's LeBron. That's AD. Uh, this is what everybody wants. No, no, no. Mm. That's not how they think. And for them to come back, it's the first time in the history of the playoffs that a team has done that twice mm. in the same playoff, come back from 3-1, Skip. Nah, I, I'm not counting these guys. But I, the I know truth is, if, if you go with your original prediction of Lakers in six, yep. that means that tonight, I think the Nuggets would have to win. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Well, no, they don't. How you? How's the math work? Well, three one. They win. They win the next one. Three two, and then we win the next next okay. one. Four four two. So, so you're okay with them winning? The, boy, it get dicey. Yeah, it, it get no dicey. Yeah, it right? don't get no dicey. Huh. It get dicey. Okay. It, it would make more sense for your prediction if the Nuggets won tonight and then the Lakers just took charge. Mm -mm. No? No. Okay, so you're still predicting? I'm predicting the Lakers win. In six? In six. Really? Yep. So the Nuggets just got a big vote of confidence from Shannon Sharp. No, they ain't no confidence huh? from Shannon Sharp. They're, they're confident that it is. Woo. I mean, they're already talking about they should have been up 2-1.
Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.